Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I am Dan Sams. And uh, we're actually going to start having a new sponsor starting, I think, next week. Ooh. Just a little, uh, just a little preview. Iron nice. on Iron Fitness Club, which is Ooh. My, <laughs> All right. It's my, Party uh, on in. I know. It's my, it's my, my fitness thing. It's, it's actually, I got a funny story about that, man. So, and I, I should save this for next week when I actually have the website set up for it. But I'm going to tell it anyway because it's funny. Yeah. So, you know, all right. So for, for everybody who doesn't know me, which is like a good part of the, the listeners, right? Because half of them come from you and half of them come from me. <laughs> so the yeah. half that doesn't really know me, I, my entire life, I've been overweight, right? That's just my entire life. I was an overweight guy. And, uh, and as we've talked about on this podcast before, I started down this little, you know, journey, weight loss, journey, transformation, whatever you want to call it, yeah. starting uh, April of 2019. And, uh, you know, I reached a point that I'm, I'm really, I'm happy with, right? I've lost about 120 pounds of fat. I've put on about 20 to 25 pounds of muscle. And I'm like, man, mm -hmm. dude, I, I look pretty good, right? <laughs> Party on, man. Yeah. So, so here's the thing you got to understand when you've been overweight your whole life there is some things that you say that you do not mean arrogantly or vainly yeah <laughs> like they could absolutely come across that way so um we're at church yesterday first time in months our church could meet indoors and sing so uh so we're at church and afterwards you know we're all hanging out talking to each other pissing off Newsom because none of us are wearing masks. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm, I'm standing there and I'm, I'm wearing a, a t-shirt and the way that I'm standing, like my, my traps and my shoulders are really, really well pronounced. Right. And, uh, <laughs> this guy goes, uh, this guy, Nikki goes, man, look at those traps, man. They look great <laughs> or something like that. And I, I just go, and I didn't mean this vainly. Right. I'm like, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Like, <laughs> but I didn't mean it like, like and so his his wife is right there and his wife Hannah is like oh yeah you know oh yeah you, my, my traps look so good my, and I go hey look all the work that I've put in I'm taking all the credit for this baby man it is not like you know anyone else did this this was all PD hitting the gym eating right doing what he needed yep. to do <laughs> So it was so That's fun, awesome. man. But uh, but anyway, man, I, I quick uh, another story. Yeah. So my buddy, he uh, he texts me this picture. He listens to the podcast. I I texted it to you. I was like, mm -hmm. I love you it. Got to see this one, man. And it's a T-shirt, and it says "Save the Dogs." It's got a big heart, a little puppy on it. Save the dogs. Abolish the ATF. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying, dying so when good. I saw that. And what's funny is he's thinking about getting his FFL because in yeah. California right now, it's like you would not believe just how much gun business there is. Yeah, and, um, and I'm like, I dare you to wear that when you have your interview with the ATF. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't think that'd go over too well. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is that this, the work, the shirt would also work if it was a Save the Children shirt. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, in the 1990s because we know they, the ATF certainly oh, didn't. Waco yeah. and Ruby Ridge. and Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You could make it. You could almost anybody. You really you could. You have a pro-women shirt. Abolish <laughs> like, the police. Defund the police. Save the dogs. I mean... <laughs> Their first reaction is, oh, look, it's a puppy. Shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm oh. not kidding. I'm not actually saying defund the police or abolish the right. police. 
And it's, as we always say, hypothetically, in Minecraft. Yeah. This is just, we're talking yeah. video game talk here. Yeah. That's all this is. <laughs> Have you seen the meme? And it's a picture of Bob Odenkirk. And I think it's it's from Better Call Saul. It might be from um, Breaking Bad. But he's standing in a courtroom doing his classic, like, face. You know, the lawyer from Breaking Bad. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, the, and the quote says, <laughs> like, your honor... My client was referring to Minecraft. It was all happening in Minecraft. <laughs> that, and that's his argument. That's, I'm that's like, actually oh, kind of funny. It is. It Have really you seen funny. the meme that's like, um, yes, your honor, my client shot the victim, but the death certificate says he died of COVID. <laughs> that's great. And I'm like, that's actually. That's pretty yeah. accurate. You might be able to use that. Why not, right? Yeah. The oh coroner said he had COVID. That's what he died from. Oh I, I'll take the assault charge, but not murder. Holy cow. That's, that's amazing right there. That's, yeah. What's funny is I was talking oh. to a buddy of mine the other day who uh, had COVID. So he got it, and he goes, um, yeah, I just was like, all right, man, this could be it. I could die. <laughs> He's like <laughs> barely older than me, so he can't be that much older. Yeah. And he goes, you know, it sucked. It was hard to breathe. And, you know, you felt it in the lungs. And he goes, and I had like three different hospitals calling me, you know, because I was at home. He goes, my wife and kids, and he's got like a gaggle of kids, like four or five. That's a gaggle to me. I got two, right? He's like they had to get tested every week and every week they kept coming back negative. So maybe it's not as contagious as yeah. or some strains aren't as contagious. Yeah. Or who knows? I don't know. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so they give him like this, this oxygen sensor to put on his finger and they're like, okay, if that ever goes below 95, you get to the hospital right away. <laughs> so he goes, it hit 92. And I'd take it off and I'd stick it on a different finger. Now it's at 97. Okay, I'm going to go with the 97 because <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I'm not going to the hospital. And this is crazy. Oh my so, uh, yeah, it was just – and he goes, I, I got to be honest with you, man. And, and now he's, he's fine. He's still – I think he has to have another test or another couple of tests, like, to show that he doesn't have it anymore. Yeah. But he's like, there's just something strange about all this. It's not – the pieces aren't jiving. And I'm a guy who had it. Yeah. He's like, this is just not matching up. Yeah. Well, I, um, I gotta be careful cause I have friends in jobs that I don't want to get them any kind of trouble, but sure. let's just say from a, in a really vague way, I have a lot of friends that work in the government and government contracting, uh, federal level, state level, local level, like, and they're looking at all this as a big play. They're like, like these are guys that do like their companies provide stuff for black ops. Right. right? And they're just like, eh, like, so like they're to them, the masks are a joke. This whole thing is a big ploy. They're not taking it very seriously. I mean, they're like, Oh, I don't want to get the hassle of people. So they're like, Oh, I'll wear a mask into this building or whatever. But you know, it's big. And they're like, I'm sitting down to eat lunch with some of these guys and they're like, Oh, now we can take our masks off because the, the, the virus only works if you're at least five feet in the air. When you sit down, you can't get it. And so, cause right. like it's all then they're just being funny. Um, but this reminds me of something. I know we, we were, we didn't talk about this ahead of time, but uh, this should have been, we should have brought this up as our topic. Um, one of these friends, man, I gotta just keep it so freaking vague. But like one of these friends that I know that works in the District of Columbia area doing <laughs> a certain type of things sent me a video, not from Q, but from a related Q type thing. And he's just like, put your tinfoil hat on for this one. And so like, you know, you know how, like, I'm, you guys probably know my opinion on Q. I'll watch some Q videos and I'll be like, eh, you know, they'll say this thing. And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting point. And then they'll say another thing. And I'm like, well, that's interesting, but you're kind of stretching it. And then they'll come to this conclusion that I'm like, okay, this is pure conjecture. Right. right? right. And then when their predictions don't come true, they'll kind of twist it around and say, well, it's not this. It reminds me of like, 
health and wealth in the church, the health and wealth prophets that like make up prophecy and then it doesn't come true. And so they kind of twist around and say, Oh, but it came through in this way. And it's like, whatever, you don't know. Right. That kind of stuff. Right. So Q stuff, I don't trust, but there is plenty of times where I'm watching something that's Q and I'm like, well, you know, that they are showing a real thing right there. And then this thing I happen to know, yeah, that's real. I don't get their conclusions. I think they jump to so many, but this guy, this is, and this wasn't Q. I think it was X 22 you're familiar with X, like, I don't know all these Q related things. So he's, this guy's watching and all he does is he's like, Hey guys, can we just pay attention to the narrative? And so he's just looking at news stories over the last five months related to both COVID and to the, um, to the election. And as we're getting closer to the election, he's like, let's just pay attention. Their entire narrative has moved from here's how we're going to win the election to they're preliminarily using fraud language that they're like, this is probably not going to be legit. You know, this thing's Mm -hmm. going to go wrong. Like he's like, man, let's just pay attention to the fact their play now speaking specifically of the more liberal Democrats, their play is that they're going to lose and they're going to react in a certain way. So the language upping the reality, upping the speculation, and this is in, media coverage, right? This is not Q themselves. They're playing these various quotes of uh, assuming that there's going to be more riots and assuming Trump is going to win through some nefarious means. And he's like, this is paying attention. This is not the talk of people who are planning to win an election. And so their well, thought I mean, was, Biden is their candidate. So, yeah. So, and the, and I'm not going to do it justice. The video was something from X 22 go and have your own thoughts, but it was one of the few things from that general Q ish camp. Cause it's not all Q right. That I'm like, man, all this guy did was walk through the media play. And that was, he's like, all I'm paying attention to is let's just look at the play and their play keeps pointing to an increase in violence um, after the election. And so they're putting that. And so here, the person sending me this is someone who, who knows some things, right? Let's just keep that really big. And, and he's like, I, I'm really thinking I need to not be in the city when, when the election's going down. Right. And um, so and for about a week because of those mail-in ballots. Exactly. That, and that came up too. And so just an interesting thing is we're talking about like the, the COVID play, the, you know, everything else that's going on um, related to our topic or our main focus is being like a from concealment shooting show, even though we cover a whole bunch of other things. Ultimately, it all is tied back to guns. Um, I'm not one of these guys that's going to say like, man, we're going to have more riots and it's going to be awful. But I'm just facing facts. That's what that's what it seems like everybody's planning for. And so now well, here, a good here's time. the thing that I'm looking at when it comes to all of that. First of all, I don't know if you've been hearing about this, but you know, we've got the West coast is on fire. I mean, oh, yeah. from California all the way up to Washington. I mean, it's not as orange today, but the air is really bad. Uh, okay. In the Bay area where my family is, San Francisco Bay area, oh. I mean, it is like bad, really just smoke everywhere. There's ash all over my gym equipment and my, Ugh. you know, couches and stuff that we've got in our backyard. And they are arresting uh, BLM and Antifa members who have been setting these fires. And yeah. it's not like mainstream news, but you can find it. They are oh. absolutely arresting people for arson and they're setting these fires. Part of the reason why Portland, the suburbs of Portland are on fire. Arson. And I'm looking at this going, okay, if Trump wins, we already know what BLM and Antifa people are doing. It's going to be ugly because yeah. they're just going to go off. Now, I don't actually think they're going to vote. So it's kind of like they just want an excuse to go burn stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also looking at it going, yeah, okay, but if Biden wins – be frank about it, man. I could honestly see some of these gun toting, crazy Trump supporters mm-hmm. doing the exact same thing. I'm like, I actually don't care who wins. I'm glad that I'm stocked up on guns and ammo because yeah. I don't know what's going to happen come November. Uh, I think you got a good point. Well, 
People I know that live near major cities are making plans to not be there for about a week surrounding um, surrounding the election. Um, I mean, I got family that we're, we're making, we're talking about it. They haven't made definitive plans, but there's a good chance they're just going to come and hang out here for a week um, just to get the heck out of Dodge until the whole thing blows over, which hopefully immediately it takes a week. Hopefully we'll see. Yeah, it could be, blowing. it could be literally the starting point of the civil war we've been talking about. That's kind of, I know. Yeah. Well, so it's funny. It kind of doesn't I, matter who wins. Like <laughs> as I talk about them coming here to hunker down until the whole thing blows over, it immediately makes me think of Shaun of the dead where he's like, well, get down to the Winchester. We'll have a pint wait for this whole thing to blow over. And it's a freaking zombie apocalypse. Right, it's not right. going to just blow over. And I'm like, maybe, maybe we're thinking too much like Sean. And um, it's not just going to be about hanging out at the Winchester for a couple of hours. It's going to be, it's going to be something more. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Interesting things. Good time to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting times, man. Interesting times for sure. It In is. fact, it, we've talked about this before, how the, uh, how there's nothing for sale in California for guns. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so I got a buddy funniest thing in the world, man. So there's this hole in the wall FFL. I mean, I wouldn't have known about him had he not told me about him. And I've used him. Cool guy. I love the guy who runs the FFL. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, that's where I did a couple of transfers when I was selling a couple of uh, firearms here recently. And there's Ooh. nothing for sale, right? I mean, there's just yeah. nothing. So we're talking, and he goes, hey, I was able to sell my 308. I'm hmm. like, really? He goes, yeah. I, I built it, right? So this is something he built. For six hundred dollars, ballpark. I don't remember if that was exactly what he said, but it was around six, six fifty, something like mm -hmm. that. He did all right on that build. And he sold it through this this guy. He basically sold it on consignment. Took a little bit longer. Took about six weeks. Sold it for seventeen fifty. Nice. That's how <laughs> crazy it is to buy guns in California. Oh, and I'm like, man. this is. This is insane. I, I'm like, I got to go yeah. buy a couple of lowers, stick them on some of my builds and go <laughs> sell my builds. Because yeah. what in the world, man? That's that's nearly tripling what it cost him to make the thing. Can you, like, that is insane. Is that not crazy? Well, I tell you what, it's not slowing down, man. We've got, well, at least, I, I mean, I comparing it to out here, we're still crazy busy, man. People signing up for classes, people buying guns, yep. handguns, ARs. Um, Friday, I'm planning to go with a friend of mine um, who is, I think, in his 70s. And he's like, I need an AR. And, I mean, he's gonna, he's in good shape, good health. He's going to be able to handle the thing. He can, he can maneuver it. Little Vietnam dude, he'll go, he's probably slotted a whole lot of commies now that I think about it. <laughs> like, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, actually, I'm thinking of, I'm looking like my, my neighbor who's mowing right now, man, like. He's he's a real deal. Marine, Vietnam, got a few other guys like that. I'm like, if it goes down, some of these dudes who actually stacked bodies are going to come in real handy. Because um, like, they're still like some of those Vietnam vets. They're older, but like they still got enough, you know, leather, leathery right. like toughness that um that they, they, they ain't going to back down. <laughs> like yeah. And, yeah, and these are not hardened commies we're talking about that we have to deal with right now. These are soy boy commies. Soy boy commies. That's the best term I've ever heard to describe any group of people, and it fits so well. Well, can I, can I just even, just thinking this through, like, think about the commun. I'm against communism all around. I think it's terrible. It's, Marxist communism is just wicked. But you look at, like, the people in the... Um, you know, like Bolshevik type revolution that brought about the Soviet Union. They were like hardworking industrial dudes. I'm sure not all of them, but a lot of these guys that actually fought, they were like, they actually were working and they're like, we want to create a worker's paradise. And they, it was terrible because communism doesn't work. They at least had a desire to do work. These are people who've been playing video games in their mom's basement. Right. And, and somehow got a hold of some really crappy communist, you know, ideology like these are not tough guys. Like when did you hear about the Antifa leader that got that 
cried in a fetal position when he got arrested. I did hear about that. (laughs) I'm like, yep. So we're not, you know, we're not dealing with real tough guys here. So like, if it goes down, I'm not expecting this to last too long from, from that perspective, at least as it's fighting on that particular front. Yeah. So our, our church uh, rents space from another church. Oh yeah. And this other church, uh, so I, I'm, I'm on the, the tech team and I do the live stream uh, every couple of weeks, something like that. So I'm showing up there early, right, you know, to do my part. And, and he's always there. Really cool guy, the pastor who, of this other church. And uh, really cool guy, older guy, apparently Vietnam vet. He was a nice. Marine in Vietnam. And um, he goes, yeah, I used to have 30 rounds of ammo back in my office. 30, no, I'm sorry, 30,000 rounds. Did I say 30,000 30, rounds of ammo back in my office? Because wow. I was just giving it away. I'm like, dude, I wish I would have known you then. But because uh, what started the whole conversation is he goes, oh, yeah, you know, I used to keep a, a gun there in the pulpit just in case. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's awesome. And he goes, but, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, if someone comes in back here, and and he wasn't talking to me at the time, and I just look over and I'm like, oh, don't worry, if someone comes in back here, I got us covered. <laughs> and he goes, you carry? And I go, yep. <laughs> yep. And he goes, oh, what do you carry, right? So then we started getting into what do I carry? And he's like, oh, I'm thinking about buying a, a 38. Uh, you know, gun brokers got some great 38s, and they keep emailing me, and and then I can shoot the 38 ammo in my 357, and and uh, he's like you know, I'm thinking about getting a carry permit. And I'm like, dude, you live in orange County, 98% approval rate. And I got to tell you, I don't know who those 2% that aren't getting approved (laughs) are, but you will get approved for your carry permit in orange County. So get your carry permit. (laughs) But uh, yeah, man, I, That's that's my, that's my calling. That's what God has called me to do to train pastors and arm pastors. <laughs> so that's what I do. It's well, we all have our spiritual gifts, <laughs> our spiritual <laughs> gifts. <laughs> I, love I, it. I always like to point out that there are three different listings of spiritual gifts, depending on how you, how you count three different listings in scripture. Um, all of them have overlap with one another, but none of them are an exhaustive list. So the understanding is that there's maybe more spiritual gifts that haven't been mentioned in scripture and maybe carrying a handgun is one of them. Okay. Maybe training, you know, is I'm one doing of them. my part. I'm doing my part. Yeah. yeah. I'm protecting so, hey, the flock. We've got uh, Cameron on here who we've, we've, we've talked to a couple of times. Cameron's like, I might just sell my build. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I, man, I don't I know, you. right? Yeah. With those kind of prices? Well, for Shoot. this kind of price, sell your backup, buy some ammo. Um, Yvonne, a good old friend like Yvonne, good to see you on here. She's like, yeah, people are just uh, willing to pay anything because they're desperate. And um, you are right. Uh, I think the desperation that people are facing right now, like this is stuff. Think about you and I, we're talking about this. I mean, not on the podcast, although on the podcast, yes, but before any of this stuff was going down, we were talking about being ready. Before we were even doing the podcast, we were talking about being ready. Um, I have been years of saying like, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You should be ready. And the people that I talked about that with acted like I was a fool or a conspiracy theorist. And now those same people are calling me freaking out, want to know what kind of gun. I know we've talked about this before, but it's not slowing down. Right. You know, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Yep. So when, when the, I think when the economic impact hits us, cause it, I don't know why it hasn't hit us yet, but it hasn't yeah. hit us yet. You cannot close down these many businesses and not have yeah. a massive impact on your economy. You, you can't do it. Like California yeah. is so screwed. They're trying to raise taxes on our ballot this year. We've got a thing out here in California <laughs> called prop 13, which basically limits how much our property taxes can raise uh, to just 2% a year. And then if you sell the home, then it resets based on the, the sale value because our home values just go up astronomically here. Yeah. And if you had to have your property taxes keep in lockstep with that, you're screwed. Like my property taxes a year, I think are like right around 12,000 bucks. That's for oh. property tax. That's oh. Oh, that hurts that's my for heart a really so bad much. education that's now online, right? 
And it's like, I got to pay $12,000 a year for that. So they got a ballot measure to actually uh, start to reduce it and how they're trying to go about it. I think it's prop 15 as they're saying, Oh, well, we want to split out businesses and we want it to not give businesses the protection of prop 13, but we're going to let you homeowners keep it. But the businesses, business property oh, no. that we get to go after. And it's like, do you not understand the economic impact that that has all around? Yeah. Cause now they got to raise their rates, which does affect me yeah. because I got to buy their product and services. Yeah. But that right there is the government not getting it. Right. Well, it's because they, California is spending money like it's water and they're screwed. Like they were screwed before COVID they're absolutely screwed post COVID and everyone's leaving California. They're like heading out of this state. If I could get my family to move, man, I would be gone. Cause this is just, it's going to become a giant ghetto statewide. There's not going to be this nice, pretty orange County. It's going to be statewide ghetto. Yep. Yep. Well, and what we're looking at nationally might not be much better. Well, we're, it, yeah. it, I mean, you got New York and California, two, the, the two biggest economies in the country are tanking. Yeah, yeah that's going to pull down the rest of the country. That's why I'm saying, man, stock up on guns and ammo because I don't know what's coming. And that's why I want to learn how to hunt, <laughs> like I yeah. keep saying, because yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, man. I might have to go live in the wilderness. I don't yeah, know. Buddy. Yep. We've got our thing where we're like, Hey, we can, we can hunker down here for a pretty good while we're in. To me, this is suburban, but everybody else tells me this is the country. It's not country compared to what I grew up in, but um, we can hunker down here for a while. And then we've got our, our plan for if we need to get the heck out of Dodge. Um, I've got places I can go. That's within, within a half day's drive that has us where we could just live off the land. Um, I'm hoping I don't have to do that. Also, as a pastor, I plan to stay here and minister to my people as long as I need to, or as long as I can. Um, so that's, but we've, we're making ready for it, man. Um, and that is where I'm like, man, I'm hoping my brother and his wife and my sister come out and spend November here because who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And at the same weird. time, the other thing, you know, when we, when the COVID thing first hit, you and I were talking about like, hey, there's going to be riots. Like, it's, it's this is going to get bad, right? And it didn't happen like two weeks later, but it happened, right? And so probably for us, we're like, man, we're trying to feel all this out. Like, I I was like, man, is this going to be go bad faster or later? Well, now it's gone bad, at least on the scale that we were expecting. Um, man, it's maybe took another few more weeks than we were planning, but it happened. Um, and so with some of the stuff we're talking about here, I, I don't know when, but we are taught, like, I think we can be pretty, pretty sadly confident that this is the direction it's going. Yeah. 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 The whole thing, man, I, I just look at, at everything that's going down. Obviously there's something else at play with the COVID because it's not as bad as they first thought. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying I want to get it, but it's not as bad as they first thought. Yeah. I mean, I remember Newsom, the whole reason why he closed everything up is because he was like, look, in like four to six weeks, I'm going to have 25 million cases on my hand. No. And closing everything up did not stop that. That's yeah. not what stopped it. It's because it's not as bad as they thought. And a lot of people yeah. who get it don't even know that they have it. Yeah. They're asymptomatic, which means their body is naturally fighting it off. This whole, yeah. oh, there's, there, we don't have any uh, you know, natural immunity to it. No, but we do have, well, actually, we do have natural immunity to it. Some people do. Um, we just don't have the antibodies naturally. Yeah. We get that afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this whole thing, man, it's just, there's something weird going down. And um, unfortunately unfortunately, man, I don't know what's going to happen long-term. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Well, I'm, I'm just going to be ready. This is where, man, so many of my conversations with people, I immediately just look, lean right over to like, man, my hope is in the Lord. Whatever happens, right. that's where my hope is. Um, my hope is not in America surviving. My hope is not in 
profitability, like all those things are nice. Like I want those things. Like it's not that I don't care, but that is not ultimately where my hope is. And so it's been a lot of my conversations because man, people get in a real dark place real quick. Um, and we know suicide rates are way up yep. during COVID. And um, I've tried to make sure that anytime I'm talking about the downer stuff, I'm like, hey, this sucks. But man, Jesus is on the throne and my hope is eternally good. Not to mention he promises to take care of his children and he always does. And so I'm like, man, Lord's always taking care of me and um, take care of me could be taking me home. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be trusting in him. And so like, man, especially for our listeners, man, if you're feeling down, you're like, Oh man, it's the end of the world. Um, man, shoot me a message. Most of you guys can find me on the Facebook page, make a comment, man. We'll, we'll reach out. We'll talk to you as a pastor. Um, also I'll talk to you as a gun owner if you need that too. But, um, you know, the pastor stuff is even more important, whether you're, whether you're ready for, whether you're ready for the impending apocalypse is not as important as whether you're ready for eternity. And so give me a call. We'll talk. Um, Hey, side note, by the way, um, uh, a David is jumping on. Hey David, so good to have you watching with us, man. Um, he's mentioned some, uh, I think he says PO boys were arrested for some of the fires too. So it sounds like the arsons were, there's some variety of people getting arrested for starting i wouldn't be surprised at all i mean oh yeah (laughs) here in orange county man we got we had in the last week two orange county sheriff deputies arrested one deputy was arrested because he broke into a house three different times after he was originally called to the house because the homeowner died an elderly guy died and he went in there, and apparently he was uh, stealing the safes out of the house. Oh, wow. Yeah. So great job, Orange County Sheriff Department, you know, for arresting him. But uh, people don't do that all of a sudden. So I kind of start looking back through <laughs> what what has he been doing. Mm-hmm. And then we had another Orange County Sheriff uh, that was arrested. She was a training officer. And she um, like stole the uh, a credit card from a suspect, stuck it in her pocket, and then gave it to her son to use. Oh my god! And she was the trainee, not the trainer, but like she was being trained. So that means from the get go, from the start, she was evil and corrupt. And then she's going to be one of those people out there enforcing the laws. Like my buddy and I, we were talking about this. Um, about uh, a guy by the name of Ronnie Coleman. Some of you might know who he is. He was like six or seven time Mr. Olympia. I mean, like one of the best bodybuilding physiques ever, just huge, huge guy. And he was a cop in, I think, Texas for years and years while he was doing bodybuilding and competing and everything. And so the, like you see a documentary on him and there's like, they, he had to have special uh, uniforms made for him because his arms were like 22 inches and just, I mean, oh. huge. Yeah. And I was like, dude, how in the world can he justify all the steroids he's doing yeah. and being a cop where he's arresting people for drugs? And don't tell me he wasn't arresting them for drugs. And my buddy was like, well, you know, everybody's got their own code of what they think is important and what they don't think is important. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And that's probably what it was. He probably justified it by like, well, these are steroids. That's different. You know, that's not going to kill you, but weed's going to kill you. I mean, I don't know, but (laughs) (laughs) like, no, it's not. No, it's not. (laughs) But still (laughs) like, how do you justify that, man? If you're going to be a cop, be a cop. Yeah. Or don't be a cop. Like just, uh, anyway. (sighs) Oh, stuff drives me crazy it makes me sad man well i'm still i'm still frustrated i i keep hearing about guys who are doing like these dudes who are a, a terrible abuse of children like like mm. you, that are getting six months or two years and the guy who i am talking to a friend of mine who's like hey, man, what's the he, story on the cuties movie with netflix man um so so you know the, the I haven't watched it. I've just heard well, not, all yeah. the hubbub about it, and I don't yeah. I don't know if it's legit or if it's another one of those internet. Uh, let's just go crucify someone. I don't it know. Seems, it seems to be pretty legit. Does it? So yeah. So the so the initial just description of the show is like uh, okay, Netflix. This is what you're telling us it is, and that sure sounds like child porn. 
And um, well, then it came out what a week or two ago. It's not been that long ago that it's actually like been it came out. And then the reviews are like, hey, uh, you know, and this is specifically mentioning like you know, eleven year old showing her breast. Like, yeah, How can um, they even do that. Yeah, exactly. It is absolutely child porn. Um, several different, like just sexual dancing that was vulgar and clearly bad. Uh, but some actual nudity, uh, according to these are what the comments are like. I started watching this. I immediately turned it off, whatever. The response from Netflix has been, um, and from the, some of the producers of the show, is that the purpose was to show exploitation of children being bad because apparently whoever is involved in this feels guilty at the end. And so it's, so I'm like, well, but they're like, no, 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 you absolutely engaged in child pornography to supposedly make that point. You had something like 600 auditions to get the girls for this show. You're like, you're absolutely doing this thing. It's like, you know, if I was going to like make a movie about how, you know, torturing bunnies is bad and i just like strangled bunnies and and then just looked sad while i was doing it like that's that doesn't make it okay and um so we're uh yeah we'll see but i know ted cruz is talking about running uh you know essentially trying to prosecute there's there's a movement to try to prosecute the people involved Uh, i canceled my netflix man like um Mm. i know several others that are just like I just don't even want to deal with it. And there's so much other crap on Netflix. And like, this was just like, felt like they were really pushing the line. And I guess one of the justifications that they used had something to do with like, well, it's art. And there was uh, such and such Sundance film festival had a similar blah, blah, blah. Well, apparently the, this, the guy running Sundance film festival just got caught with child porn. He's getting yep. put away. Yep. Um, I don't, put much stock in this yet, but there are some rumblings of accusations against the Netflix CEO for, uh, for child porn. But that's, that's, I, I'm not sure that that's not just some kind of a rumbling rumor at a convenient time. Right. Um, but, uh, cool. Lots of, lots of shady stuff happening, man. So, yeah. So I don't know the details other than like what they admit to is pretty doggone bad. What what's being communicated by people who are watching it. A buddy of mine said, he's like, man, I watched a kind of a YouTube video that was explaining what's in it. And he's like, just what was in that was so wicked. And he's like, really? and yeah, he's like, I, I didn't watch the show. He's like, I'm watching this thing kind of critiquing it. And he's like, I, he's like, I, I mean, I watched a few minutes and I'm like, oh, this is, this is insane. Like even the, even the review he didn't feel comfortable with. And they're trying to say like, look at this is awful. Um, which is kind of the tricky thing on some things like this. Cause people are like, you know, if like so you're, you know, claiming to say that a book is bad and like, well, have you read it? Well, this, it's like, I can't review this without watching child porn. Right. So I'm not gonna, um, but we've got plenty of people, including what Netflix themselves says is in it is it like that's self-admission as far as I'm concerned. Mm. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to just fire up that wood chipper, you know, try to solve some problems. Yeah. If, if it all goes down, (laughs) we, uh, let's just, you know, if we have total end of the world as we know it, apocalypse, um, you know, it might be like America could become one big prison riot where a whole bunch of, of, uh, of problems are just handled. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. we're in a crazy time, man. I don't know, man. That's just, it's, it's disturbing on so many levels. I mean, yep. yeah, I haven't, it really is. I haven't read any of the reviews. I haven't watched it because honestly, it's not the kind of thing I would watch. <laughs> yeah. So to me, it yeah. was like, it has nothing to do with the child porn. It's like, I'm not going to watch a yeah. movie with little kids. I'm I'm not the yeah. little kid movie kind of person. Well, this is actually an interesting thing. Hold on. Cause there's, I'm going to look up cuties rating really quick because my understanding. So when I first saw it, um, when I not, not saw it, no, when I first heard about it coming out, so it's rated TVMA. So when I first heard about it, I'm like, is this now I'm like, clearly this is exploitation of children, but in my mind, I'm like, is this another one of those things where they try to get little girls to start thinking about dressing provocative and all that kind of stuff. And so my thought initially was, have they put together this wicked show? Are they targeting young girls with it 
to try to lead them down a path. Like that was what I was assuming, but it's rated TVMA, right? So it's like, we're making a show about children that we're admitting children can't watch. So this is not about, this is not for children. So no, so now then you have to set it in. Okay. This is in the category of you've made an, a show for adults that features sexually explicit scenes with children. So like, now, no matter what category you put that in, it's real bad. But like, it's a self-admission here that like, I mean, you're giving it an MA rating because you know what this is for. Eh, oh. And yeah, here's the worst part to me is I hear this. Yeah, that stuff has an impact on society. But what about those kids who are the actors? I know. I mean, they're kids. They don't even understand probably yeah. at this point if they are 11 years old. Yeah. I mean, really, until puberty kicks in, I don't, I don't think we really understand. Yeah. Here, and then here's an you, you look back and you're like, you start to regret, man, you know, why did yeah. I do this topless scene as an 11-year-old so some pervert can get off? Yeah. Which, and then think about like some adult – some parent, some guardian allowed that. Was okay um, enough with it. Yeah. Usually the, uh, it's because the parent's living vicariously through the kid. Parent couldn't make yeah. it as an actor. My kid can. Check this out. Um, Rotten Tomatoes shows the, uh, the audience score at 3%. The tomato meter, whatever, at 88%. So the critics love this movie. And your everyday American is like, this is absolute trash. Um, yeah. <sighs> what the reason mess. we carry guns to this solve is exactly problems. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> no, I think no, that no. to stop threats, sorry, to, to stop, stop a threat. Threats. Hey, a threat is a problem. And um, yeah, if there's a problem, yo, I'll solve it. <laughs> as the great wise uh, rapper once said, Yeah. What a world we're in, man. Yeah. Hey, everybody, stay strapped or get clapped. Um, we need one for wood chippers. <laughs> stay, stay chipping. What was that movie with the, with the wood chipper? What was the That's movie? Fargo, man. Fargo. Hey, you know what's really fun? You talk to people from Fargo that don't understand. Like, they, a lot of people from Fargo haven't seen the movie. Okay. I have friends from Fargo that didn't see it until they moved here, and they're like, what? Um, they don't, they don't get wood chipper references. Like when they say like, blah, blah, blah in Fargo. And I'm like, so do you guys all have wood chippers there in Fargo? And they're like, what? Um, and like, they just, it's, a, <laughs> and then, and then to hear them talk and they're like, um, but like, this is like, the, you know, like part of the fun of that movie is the way everybody's talking. And, um, no, that's just how they talk. Now they've been in my particular Fargo friends have been here for a while. And so they don't talk like that as, as much, but, oh, Fargo. That was a great movie. One of the things I'll, I'll say, okay, so Orange County uh, finally got to open up some different things. So now, because now we're in the red tier, like our freaking governor's pissed that we made it down to the red tier. But <laughs> at the red tier, we can, 25% uh, of movie theaters can be open or not of the theater, but of the seats available can be available. Um, you can do in in restaurant dining for the first time in months up to 25%. And uh, so for the first time in seven months, I could go to the movies. I am a movie guy. Like if you listen to my other podcasts, you know, in the past I would go to the movies every Sunday. That's what we do. Well, not we, it would usually be me. I'd dump off the kids with the wife and I'd go to the movies. So last night I went and saw a tenant. Oh, yeah. This is good. I must say, I, I got to see it again because it's about time travel and just time distortion, like not even all of its time travel. So I got to go watch it again because it's like confusing on so many levels. Excellent. And starts off with a great gun scene. And I'm like the whole movie, all like right. guns after gun. I'm like, oh, yeah, look. Now he's got the threaded barrel illegal in California, but he's got the threaded barrel. I love that L little side note for all of you, uh, California, you can't have a threaded barrel on your pistol. Now it's legal to buy a threaded barrel. It's legal to own a threaded barrel. It's not legal to apply that threaded barrel to your firearm. 
So, uh, you know, just, just know that they don't want us putting silencers on it, but right. silencers aren't legal in California. So, you know, it's the way it goes. Nice. The, uh, I need to see that movie then. Sounds like it's worth. Yeah. A couple of guys said, uh, tenant was, was good. Uh, Greg Henry says definitely need to see it again. A tad confusing. Yeah, it is confusing. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like I, for, as soon as I was watching it, I was like, I'm going to have to go back and watch this thing again. Cause yeah. I don't understand everything that's going on. I'm getting confused. <laughs> oh, I just realized I've got friends joining in here that might not be pro gun. So for fair warning, those of you who've jumped on just recently, um, we like guns here. Um, we've, <laughs> we also, <laughs> we like freedom. We like freedom. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, we'll have to see that movie. Um, I think that's a, that's a good idea. My boy, my boy, Austin jumping on here, man, like, um, says, let's go. Yeah. He's the dude that I would go and see Marvel movies with. Uh, let's go, man. And actually, Greg, if you want to see it again, come with us, man. Um, I would love to go and see one of those. I want to patronize some movie theaters. Have um, you seen, uh, do, are your movie theaters open yet? Um, I don't know, actually. Um, I, I have heard that they are, but okay. I haven't been any, I, it's hard for me to get out to a movie anyway, but right. Right. Yeah. But I think so. I think yeah, they're open. I, I dump the kids. I dump the kids on the wife and I go, yeah, that's my, go. that's my sanity play for the week. I really want to see Bill and Ted's just because, yeah, you know, from watching the other two when I was a kid. Yes. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah. Peyton said he saw it. He goes, it's not as good as the first two. He goes, but I still loved it. Awesome. So, you know, there's that. I think we need a little Bill and Ted right now. Our whole culture be excellent to each other. Should be a good thing. Maybe they're the <laughs> ones that save us in 2020. Maybe they finally get that song written and, uh, and they save 2020. <laughs> they save the world from 2020. <laughs> That's what's needed, man. It really oh, is. oh, that would be great. It is funny to me how watching a couple of like positive movies that I'm like, this makes me feel better about everybody watching through the Marvel movies. And I'm like, man, we can't all get along. And yeah. dude, What's nuts. funny is when the, when the lockdown started and we couldn't go anywhere mm -hmm. since then, we have seen all of the Marvel movies as a family. We've seen all yeah. the Marvel movies, all of the star Wars movies, all eight or nine of the Harry Potter movies, all of the DC movies. Uh, and right now we're working through the X-Men movies. Nice. So yeah, we're running out of movies. Like yeah, we're going to have to start it all over again. That's um, yeah. Well, that's we're yeah, as you're saying that I'm thinking like, man, we're almost, we're about to watch Ant-Man and Wasp and then Endgame with my daughter probably this week. So that'll put us through all of those. And then um, I, I think she's about ready for Lord of the Rings. So I'm going to do that. That'll buy me some, some viewing with her quality viewing. Um, hey, Yvonne is telling me uh, you can rent out the whole cinema, invite like 20 of your friends, family. Hey, hundred bucks. You can rent out a cinema. Yeah. So cinemas are open. Praise the Lord. I say nice. we make good use of it to a limited capacity. Apparently. Uh, apparently yeah but we can make that work yeah we had a we were supposed to wear masks like there are rules where you have to wear a mask coming in buying refreshments and when you're in the auditorium so of course unless you're eating or drinking so i took a bottle of water right because i'm like i'm not mm -hmm. wearing a mask when i'm watching yeah. a movie this is ridiculous yeah they never came in and checked and i was like yeah. oh thank goodness have the rule anyone's really worried wear your mask Leave me That's, alone. I, I pull up to this coffee shop in uh, where I was going for this meeting. I'm in I'm in another state, and um, I, I pull up gigantic sign saying "mask order in effect, must wear a mask." And I'm like, I don't want any trouble, so I'll put my mask on. As soon as I walk in, there's nobody in there except the owner. He's not wearing a mask. He's standing behind the desk. And I'm like, awesome. Take out my mask, and we had a wonderful time of celebrating freedom. It was good. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. So um, I know we're coming to the end of our time. I'll do a quick plug um, for uh, Lake Erie Arms as usual. We just opened up that AR care and maintenance class. And so um, really, I'm going to highly recommend get on there, sign up for the class. It is cheap and you need it. Um, I am having more conversations with people. They're buying their first AR. Maybe they're on AR number 10. 
but they actually haven't really learned how to properly lubricate and maintain it. They haven't really learned how to take care of jams. And I know for a lot of us, we somehow think that by osmosis, having a particular type of firearm means you know how to take good care of it. It doesn't. Um, there are things you need to make sure you know about really making sure that thing functions well forever. Um, come and take the class. It's 50 bucks. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot. You can sign up at learms.net. And while you're there, buy some ammo. We do have 5.56 five, and 223 and 9 millimeter and things that you need to get. So come on out. Love it. Love it. Good stuff. Well, awesome, Dan. Thanks so much for uh, doing this today. And guys, we'll Good be times. back next week with another episode. We'll talk Thanks, to you soon. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great night. Take care. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.